that are twofold more the child of hell for right. every one that is truly saved. Right. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with so many people. and uh, One man, he was actually a paid staff member at the Highland Park Baptist Church, Chattanooga, Tennessee, an epicenter for, for decades of great soul winning among any kind of fundamental Baptist in America. Mm -hmm. And I went out with this man house to house one day in Chattanooga. <clears throat> and uh, it was dreadful. I was 15, mm. and I didn't know a lot, but I knew this was wrong. Mm. For instance, one house we walked, we knocked on the door, and <clears throat> this man answered the door, and the, and the gentleman with me, he would use this fleshly approach of, well, I'm, yeah, I'm so-and-so from, from the Highland Park Baptist Church. I'm doing a survey today, and this is what I call bait and switch. This is a hook method. He's not being honest. He really wasn't doing a survey, mm -hmm. but a, a survey... You know, do you, do you have any type of religion you're involved in? He had several questions. You know, how many kids do you have? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how is life in Chattanooga? Whatever, all this stuff. And really, it all comes down to, he's, he's getting him to where he's going to ask him, are you 100% sure that if you died today, you would go to heaven? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he finally gets to that, and the man answers, well, yes, I am sure that I'm going to heaven. And so this man with me, he says, well, how are you sure you're going to heaven? He said, well, years ago, I, I prayed with one of you guys from Highland Park, and I asked the Lord to save me. Now... You have to have this mental picture, though. The guy literally had a cigarette in one hand, an open container of alcohol in the other, and a filthy magazine in his back pocket that you could see every time he moved a little bit. Now, here's a question for us to consider. Is it possible, think, think about the scriptures, think about the church of Corinth and some of these that we see in scripture. Is it possible for a saved person to engage in drinking, smoking, and viewing pornography. I believe it is possible. Based on my reading of Ephesians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, I mean, <clears throat> and uh, some other passages, uh, looking at the life of Lot, who God said is a righteous man and all. So I believe it's possible. What I don't believe is possible is for a saved person with the indwelling Holy Spirit, and they're being confronted by a Baptist preacher and a a young man that's training to be a Baptist preacher and having all the confidence in the world with all this wickedness in his life right at the moment. Yeah, I'm saved. I got saved years ago with you Highland Park guys. That's Jesus mm -hmm. in my heart. And just as confident as could be, no shame, no remorse, no regret. Mm -hmm. I cannot understand that at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Looking at Scripture and having dealt with people and knowing my own, knowing how God has worked in my heart, mm -hmm. I could not imagine being confronted mm -hmm. by Christians being engaged in those activities and just being calm, cool, calm, and collected, having absolute confidence. And of course, you know, that man, he went on then to, to oh, well, you know, we're glad you're saved and whatever, and, oh. you know, move on to the next house. And over and over that day as I went with him, I saw carnal salesmanship on display. It was very sad. But I said all of that to say this. I, I spent uh, four or five days with that man getting to know him well. He introduced me to Dr. Lee Robertson, who gave us a great little pep talk about the common people hurt him gladly and how we got to go after souls and all. And I am convinced that particular man I was out with, I'm convinced he really did, uh, he really was sincere. He really believed he was serving Jesus. He's trying to win souls. He's trying his best. But he was in a system where he had been taught by his spiritual leadership and all, this is how we ought to do this. Right. And it's very sad. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and as I said, his sincerity does not negate the fact that he was wrong. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't. Yeah. If, it's so, if he's okay because he was sincere, then all the Roman Catholics that are sincere are okay too. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the Buddhists that are sincere are yeah. okay too. Right. And everybody else that's sincere is okay. Mm -hmm. No, someone being sincere in their heart doesn't make it okay. That's we right. must agree with God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe a simple <coughs> approach to understanding this type of thing could be to talk about God-centered soul winning versus man-centered soul winning, which is really salesmanship. Mm -hmm. And that's become kind of a cliche, it's kind of a trait saying now, but it's really true, man-centered or God-centered. Can everybody kind of get that in their minds? You know, if I was intelligent enough to use PowerPoint, I could put a PowerPoint up with a nice line down the middle, like a man-centered, uh, and uh, I could have God-centered, we could have those in bold, you know, and maybe some neat stuff there. Maybe I'll get around to that one of these days. <laughs> But I think there's three key areas that differentiate between the two. You can look at the motivation of the witness, and you can look at the methods employed, <clears throat> and then you can look at the message. So the motivated, the motivation, if you study the, if you study the great books on soul winning by the so-called experts, who I contend are actually salesmen, hmm. you will see that they make much about, uh, for instance, the excitement that abounds in a church where there's a lot of soul winning. Yeah, have any of you have any of you ever heard that type of thing? Mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing like a soul-winning church. 
You get a real soul winning church and every week people are walking down the aisle and the waters of baptism are continually being stirred and people are making decisions all over time. There's no excitement like a soul winning church. Some of you have heard that. I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's always a spirit of revival. It's like electricity in the air. You can cut it with a knife. It just crackles, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. So that's a, that's a big motivation, the excitement that abounds when lost people are drawn into their net. Oftentimes there's a motivation, a consistent motivation of, you know, why should we go soul winning? People need to go to heaven. We want people to go to heaven when they die. Now, I think any servant of the Lord wants people to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want people to go to hell. Mm -hmm. I want them to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But is that really the consistent emphasis in Scripture? Mm -hmm. Is that something that Jesus just continually preached? Mm -hmm. You need to go to heaven when you die. You need to be sure you're going to heaven when you die. <coughs> you see Paul constantly going back to heaven when you die, heaven when you die, heaven when you die. Actually, you see Paul talking about serving God in this present evil world. Mm -hmm. You see a whole lot of that. Mm -hmm. Another message hammered by the man-centered evangelist or soul winner is that people are on their way to hell. Souls are dying. Men are crying. People need the Lord. People, it's constantly people, people, people. It's man-centered. People are depressed. People are lonely. People feel like no one cares. People wander about aimlessly. You know, we want them to have real joy. We want them to have their best life now. All mm -hmm. those type of things. That's man-centered. Mm -hmm. The Lord's people do want people delivered from hell. I actually do want people to have joy. Mm -hmm. I want people to have peace. Mm -hmm. I, I want people to... You know, feel good about life from the inside out. I, I want people to have good marriages. I want people to have good relationships with their children and all of that. But that's not the continual thrust you see in the New Testament. Amen. Things can be so much better for you if you just be saved. Right, that's right. Thinking about the uh, the motives for the man-centered salesman types, Curtis Hudson, who I mentioned last night, he was a master of the carnal salesmanship style. He gave some motives for his brand of evangelism. You can read on pages 19 to 21 of his book, Great Preaching on Soul Winning. He wrote the, this, and he wrote that, uh, here's, what, well, what I'm doing is compiling. I'm not going to quote directly from him, but he gave some great motives for, uh, for his style of evangelism. You'll have bigger attendance in your church services. Okay, so you really, you don't know, get, go crazy soul winning. More people. You'll have church growth. So there's more people again. You'll have church, joyful church members, so the people that you have will be full of joy. You'll have loving church members. You'll have increased finances. <laughs> yeah, more people, happy people, joyful people, more money, okay. You'll have clean living members. He wrote this, and this is a direct quote. If there is such a thing as a cure-all, it is soul winning. It solves more problems in the local church than anything I know of. It's kind of funny when you think about Paul and how he went soul winning. And here's all these people that uh, he didn't involve himself in at all at one point. Now he's involved with them, and they are truly saved, and now he has all kinds of problems. <laughs> because these people actually did get saved and joined the church. And so it's so all kinds of problems in Corinth and in Ephesus and in Thessalonica and all. But it solves more problems in the local church than anything I know of. So there's a, a motivation, a big motivation that he pushed regularly. You want to solve church problems, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning. Motivation. Jack Hiles wrote, and this is a pretty lengthy quote, but he actually preached this. It was also put down in a, in a book on soul winning. He wrote, soul winning is the basic secret of every other problem in the church. For example, here is a church that's having cold services. There's no warmth. The Lord does not meet with them. Now let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. That type of terminology is, is found all throughout this mentality that I'm dealing with, the right. salesmanship. You want Jesus to meet with you. Right. If it's a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, right. is Jesus meeting with them? Yes. He is. Whether it feels cold or warm, whether people are kind of sleepy or whether they're very zealous. Now, Jesus may not be happy with how the people are behaving. Mm -hmm. He may not be pleased mm -hmm. with them being you know, drowsy and not caring and all. But if it's the Lord's church, he's meeting with them. Revelation 1, 2, and 3 tells us that. That's the right. Lord promised that in Matthew 18. But he says, the Lord doesn't meet with them. How do you overcome it? Get to winning souls. If somebody walks down the aisle every Sunday and professes their faith in Christ, that will warm that service up a great deal. Here is the church having trouble with its business. It doesn't have enough folks who know business. It's having trouble handling its legal affairs. It doesn't have enough wisdom. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. So God gives extra wisdom to those who win souls. I didn't quite get that out of that. 
Proverbs 11.30 myself. If you go soul winning, God gives you extra wisdom. But anyway, I would rather have a soul winning ignoramus run the business of my church. I love some of the hyperbole and all. I'd rather have a I just picture this, you know, total ignoramus. I'd rather have him. I wonder how he's winning souls if he's an ignoramus, because he that wins souls is wise. I don't know. But anyway, I'd rather have a soul winning ignoramus run the business of my church than a group of big shots who won't come to prayer meeting on Wednesday night. In the First Baptist Church in Hammond, our deacons and leaders are men not necessarily who are business wise, but men who are spiritual and soul winners because God gives them wisdom that no one else has. So you see in the motivation. You, you, want to, you want to do better in your business, you want to do better in your legal affairs, you want to have more exciting services, you want the Lord to show up, you've got to go soul winning. The same is true about your finances. If you have trouble raising your money, just get some sinners converted. When Jesus wanted some money, what did he do? He caught a fish with money in its mouth. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm laughing because honestly, I don't know whether to cry or laugh at some of this. It's terrible. It's it's just terrible, and it's 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 so sad that uh, this stuff is actually believed and embraced. And so the same is true if you'll get busy about soul winning. So you know, you, I guess the I guess the implication is go soul winning, and you'll catch a fish with money in its mouth. You know, you'll have some people get saved, and they have lots of money, and they'll foot the bills or whatever. The same is true if you'll get busy about soul winning. Now, if you have a little trouble in the church, go soul winning. So how to, how to get rid of trouble in the church? Here's the motivation. Go soul winning. Suppose Dr. Rice and I have a fuss. He's referring to John R. Rice. The best thing for us to do is to go soul winning together. So you have a fuss in the local church. Go soul winning together. Am I crazy? I'm thinking, like, go to that brother and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of that before I'm thinking, let's go soul winning. But anyway... He was an expert, so if we can win somebody to Jesus together, we will make it all right. We will love each other again. But see, that's man's thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's man's ideas. Mm -hmm. God's idea is you have a problem in the church, deal with that problem. Mm -hmm. Evangelize, of course, but deal with that problem. It's not deal with the problem by going soul winning. It's deal with the problem by actually dealing with the problem. Mm -hmm. I tell my preacher boys in my church, if you go to a church where they're about to vote you out, kick you out, what you need to do is go out and win enough folks to carry the vote right quick. <laughs> so, this is totally carnal. So you get, here's some motivation. Get a bunch of people saved and they'll love you so much that they'll vote out the other people who are trying to vote you out. I was called to a church one time. In fact, the first full-time church I ever had, I, had, I carried the vote 25 to 17. When I got there the first Sunday, a lot of my folks were gone. Usually the first Sunday at the church you present yourself for membership, but I didn't have enough folks there to vote me in. And I was already pastor, so I didn't join. I went out winning souls, and I won 18 or 20 the first few weeks. Then I joined the church. I had enough of them to vote me in. So that will take care of your problems, end of quote. Mm -hmm. So why go soul winning? Well, excitement. Mm -hmm. Well, you want Jesus to show up, don't you? You want people to get along with each other. You want to be able to carry the vote. Mm -hmm. You want to have giving increase. As Curtis Hudson says, if there's such a thing as a cure-all, it is soul winning. But let's think about the Bible motive for soul winning. What is it? Very simply, it's the glory of God. Mm -hmm. The first century believers went preaching for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. 3 John, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Psalm 113, 3. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Mm -hmm. That's why we go soul winning. Biblical soul winners have been saved themselves to the praise of His glory, Ephesians 1.12. Right. Mm -hmm. And they desire others be saved. Yeah, we don't want them to go to hell. We want them to have peace. We want mm -hmm. them to go to heaven. We want their marriages to be better. We want mm -hmm. there to be joy and all of that. We, we want to see the church grow. But why? Because we want God glorified. Amen. God is glorified in His church and through His That's church. Right. They desire others to be saved to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Even in our desire for them not to go to hell, it's because we would rather have them in heaven worshiping and praising God for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. All of ministry, all the Christian life, all of New Testament church life has one overriding purpose or motivation. What is that? It's the glory of God. Amen. Revelation 4.11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure 
for thy pleasure. They are and were created. So we want people saved from sin. Absolutely. But why? It's not just so they're saved from sin. For instance, you have a neighbor, and he's a really bad guy. He's a really mean guy. He's despicable. He cusses at you. He throws trash on your lawn. Do you want him to be saved so he'll be a nice neighbor so you can have a more peaceful life? You want him to be saved so that he will glorify God. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, well, yeah, you'll have a nice neighbor then. Right. You'll have a neighbor that loves God. But mm -hmm. it's not just, I want him to stop sinning so that the world's a better place. Right. Or, or how about this one? We need to go so on so America will get back on track. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Carnal motivations. That's right. Mm -hmm. We want America to be as strong as it once was. We want, we want America to, you know, be a clean living nation. And we want, I've heard guys say, we've got to go soul winning. That's the only way we're ever going to win this thing politically. We've got to have so many people mm -hmm. saved that we can get rid of the liberals, you know, in office. Mm -hmm. Where is that motivation in the Bible? Right. Mm -hmm. oh, it's the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We want people saved from sin to glorify the Lord. We want them delivered from hell so that they'll worship and serve the Lord forever. You know, as we preach the gospel for the glory of God, even if the overwhelming majority of those that we're preaching to are never saved, we're still glorifying the Lord mm -hmm. because we're obeying Him. We're obeying His command to evangelize. So God is, is to be glorified, and He is glorified by His people obeying Him. Mm -hmm. That's why we go soul winning. Mm -hmm. And this is so key because if you drift away from this biblical understanding of soul winning, witnessing for the glory of God, then as a church and as individuals, you can be carried so quickly into pragmatism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's all about the glory of God, then you keep the standards where they ought to be. You right. keep the practice where it ought to be. You keep the doctrine where it ought to be because we're not responsible for results. We're mm -hmm. responsible to glorify God by obeying Him. Amen. But if it becomes all about results, if it becomes pragmatism, if it becomes, well, keeping people out of hell, helping people to have a better life, whatever it takes to get them to heaven, if that's coming from the imagination, mm -hmm. then it's very easy for the flesh to yield to unbiblical messages and unbiblical methodologies for the sake of seeing more results, even though the results are ultimately going to be wood, hay, and stubble. Mm -hmm. If you don't serve the Lord His way, then it's wood, hay, and stubble. Mm -hmm. So biblical soul winners are firmly committed to obeying the Lord and leaving the results up to Him. This mentality of whatever it takes to keep people out of hell. Win the lost at any cost. I do not agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. You don't win the lost at the cost of doctrine, mm -hmm. at the cost of biblical church practice, mm -hmm. at the cost of a church being pure. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You mm -hmm. win. The only way you truly win the lost is by obeying the Lord in this matter. But uh, when you go down this road of whatever it takes to get them, you know, whatever it takes to get them in to hear the preaching or whatever, it opens up the door for all kinds of pragmatism. It opens up the door for enticing people to come in. Mm -hmm. Let's entice them. Let's do the God and Country Day. Mm -hmm. Let's do the Honor of the Civil Servants Day. Let's do the Honor of the Military Day. Let's do the um, Old Fashioned Day, Ride a Wagon to Church Day. Let's, you know, whatever. And then independent Baptists will do that. They'll use enticements. There was one group that recently did a, it was a big God and country type of thing, you know, God bless America. And the enticement was we're having a patriotic rally. That's the enticement. So we're going to honor teachers. We're going to honor veterans. We're going to honor first responders. We're going to have a giant flag. And they told how many feet, you know, big the flag was. We're going to have a giant choir. We're going to sing patriotic songs. And then, of course, you know, they're going to preach the gospel and everything. But, but it's an enticing with patriotic fervor. It's almost like we're really going after the Tea Party types, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's enticing all of them in with all of that. And then we're going to preach to them. And, and independent Baptists will use that type of methodology that's nowhere found in Scripture. Jesus mm -hmm. never enticed anybody like that. Mm -hmm. The apostles never did it. It's man-made. It's carnal. Mm -hmm. But they will do that. And then at the same time, they will really kick up a fuss and criticize in a big way people like Bill Hybels, Rick Warren, Mark Driscoll. Why? Well, because those guys, well, they're using rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Well, they're using, you know, some celebrity. Well, they're using Tim Tebow. Well, well, Mark Driscoll, he's got beer flowing and dancing and everything else going on at his New Year's Eve party. Well, hey, wait a minute. Win the loss at any cost, right? I mean, you're, what you're doing is saying, we're willing to go a little beyond Scripture. Mark and, and Bill and those guys, they're willing to go a lot beyond, but they all have the same basic motivation. We've got to get people saved. Hmm. We've, got to get, we've got to keep people out of hell. We've got to get people to where they're uh, you know, on the way to heaven. And so really, pragmatism, 
it can take a church a long way. Hmm. And we are, we are nowhere called to behave like this, but that would all be part and parcel of the wrong motivation. Mm -hmm. Well, another identifier between man-centered salesmanship and biblical soul winning would be the methodology employed. Obviously, psychologically and sales techniques are employed by the salesman. That's your Mitchell. Yes, sir. Take a break. Take a break right here. All right. Let's take a break. It's 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Thanks.